You may have heard of RTS or real-time strategy games at least once. These are games where you have to devise and execute strategies in real time. But it's not just a matter of pressing buttons while time passes. The key is that everything happens simultaneously. While I'm issuing an attack command, my opponent could be moving around, harvesting resources, building new units, or constructing additional structures. Both sides are basically racing on foot at the same time, which means the situation grows massively complicated as the game goes on. Compare that with something like Go or Chess. In those games, I take a turn, then you take a turn, back and forth, so it's always clear whose move it is, and you can see all the pieces or stones on the board. Perfect information. RTS, on the other hand, has something called Fog of War, which essentially means the part of the map outside my vision is shrouded in a fog. I can't see what the opponent is up to, where they're located, or what they're building. That's the core of a partial information game. To figure out what your opponent's doing, you need to send a scout unit. People not used to RTS might ask, why send a unit just to look around, not even attacking the enemy base? Well, that is exactly the point of scouting, spotting the opponent's plan so you can respond. Meanwhile, in my own main base, I still have to mine resources, build units, time my attacks, and maybe set up expansions for more economy. And yes, I have to do all that simultaneously. This multitasking on multiple fronts is what makes RTS both fun and challenging. Take StarCraft 2 for instance. It's often said the game runs at about 22 to 30 frames per second, sometimes higher. If each frame can trigger at least 10 possible actions, that might mean on the order of 10 to the power of 22 actions per second. When pro gamers or high-level AI do intense micro-control, the number can be even higher. You can split your army into different groups, upgrade while attacking, build structures somewhere else, all at once. Some academic papers even estimate 10 to the power of 22 to 10 to the power of 25 possible actions per second. 20 minutes equals 10 to the power of 26,400. The gargantuan state space of RTS. It gets more shocking when you scale that up to a 20 minute match. If there are about 10 to the power of 22 branches each second and you multiply that by 1,200 seconds, you get 10 to the power of 22 times 1,200, which equals 10 to the power of 26,400. That is astronomically huge. Considering the number of atoms in the universe is estimated at about 10 to the power of 80, you can see how 10 to the power of 26,400 is downright absurd. Obviously, you don't literally explore every branch in actual play, but the theoretical maximum being so gigantic illustrates how complex RTS can be. So, does that mean a supercomputer can just brute force it? Think about Go. AlphaGo came along and defeated the top human player. It used Monte Carlo Tree Search, plus a deep neural net, the policy and value network, to focus on promising moves. But RTS is a different beast. It's real-time, not turn-based, there's hidden info, and there can be multiple battles happening simultaneously. The state space explodes combinatorially, so it's on an entirely different scale than Go or Chess. You may have heard of AlphaStar, DeepMind's project for StarCraft II. Around 2019, it made headlines by beating professional players. It was reportedly trained on Google TPUs at massive scale for several months. However, it was limited to certain maps, certain races, certain versions. Why? Because RTS developers push out patches, rebalance units, add new maps, basically changing the game's meta. Each time, the AI might need a huge new round of data collection and training. Even a supercomputer at exaflop scale, or 10 to the 18th operations per second, can look puny if you consider 10 to the 26,400 
as the theoretical state space. Granted, that's an extreme scenario where you attempt to explore everything, but it shows brute force is impossible. Like with Go, you need a more refined approach, deep learning, reinforcement learning, heuristics, to focus on the truly important decisions. Then there's parallel simulation. AlphaStar spins up thousands or tens of thousands of StarCraft II clients simultaneously, letting AI agents fight each other and learn from replays. This compresses what might be decades of human pro-gamer play into just a few months of machine time. But it requires an insane amount of GPU, TPU horsepower, potentially in the megawatt range. For example, 10,000 GPUs at 300 watts each is 3,000 kilowatts, which equals 3 megawatts. Include the cost of cooling, infrastructure, engineers, and that's tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Meanwhile, HPC hardware like NVIDIA's H100 can be up to 2,000 times faster than older Intel-based CPUs for certain AI tasks. That's amazing, but RTS is so vast that pure speed alone doesn't solve it all. Hardware and algorithms both need to improve. Another reason RTS feels so tough is its rapidly changing meta or strategic trends. Each season or patch, you might hear this unit is now overpowered or someone discovered a weird cheese build. Human pro gamers adapt almost intuitively. Oh, I'll switch to mechanized Terran this season. Or I'll do a quick rush because Zerg is too strong on this map. An AI that's optimized for a specific patch might struggle heavily after an update, requiring more extensive training. There's also psychological warfare unexpected opening cheese builds or delayed expansions that rely on big, late game troops. If an AI didn't train on those unusual tactics, it can get blindsided. Without enough data, the AI might fail to recognize that certain moves are actually feasible or lethal. So AI versus human remains interesting precisely because humans come up with surprises. All this complexity prompted the creation of the Open Real-Time Strategy, ORTS, project at the University of Alberta by Bureau and Fertac. It's an open source RTS engine that uses a server client model, making hacks harder, and allows you to define units and actions via scripts. You also get a full AI interface for experimentation. The server maintains the entire game state, sending only visible info to each client, preventing fog of war hacks. We've seen AlphaStar beat certain pro gamers under specific constraints. We have ORTS as a research environment, HPC is advancing rapidly with innovations like the NVIDIA H100 and such, yet a universal master AI that can handle all maps, races, patches and bizarre builds is still a ways off. RTS demands far more than fast hardware real-time action, teamwork, hidden info, meta shifts, mind games. There's a huge variety of shifting variables. Still, many foresee that eventually it'll happen. Give it enough years of hardware speed-ups, plus improvements in multi-agent reinforcement learning, meta-learning, evolutionary algorithms, and so forth, and we might see an AI that truly masters all RTS. At that point, we might even consider it a step toward artificial general intelligence. RTS research isn't confined to games. Defense simulations, multi-robot command, traffic and logistics optimization, all require real-time coordination of many agents under partial info. RTS AI could significantly contribute to these fields. For instance, DARPA has used an RTS-like setup for UAV swarm simulation, coordinating multiple robots in a smart factory environment. That's not so different from an RTS scenario. In the end, RTS is a massive playground for AI research complex system science and eSports. On one hand, its giant state space means current hardware and algorithms can't fully keep up. On the other hand, projects like AlphaStar and ORTS have shown significant breakthroughs. It's going to take time, but that journey is exactly what makes it exciting. AI keeps getting stronger. 
while human players counter with unexpected gambits and fresh strategies, and the two evolve together. Like how self-driving cars steadily improve each year, RTS AI can accumulate experience from countless simulations. One day, we might see an almost perfect RTS AI, and that moment could flip the entire landscape. Hopefully this rundown helps illustrate why RTS is so much more difficult than typical board games, and yet so fascinating. Imagine how many GPUs, TPUs, HPC resources, and hours of research go into each AI victory over pro gamers. The technology offers boundless possibility, but demands persistent effort and funding. Meanwhile, humans keep innovating and having fun, so the future of RTS could be quite a ride. Subscribe channel and click like. That makes you smart.